Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about DIY doggy bows. Um, as you all know, or you should, I buy my dog bows um, mostly from doggybowties.com. However, you know, I, I'm into DIY projects, you know, like with home grooming, and I like to make my own bows from time to time. And I find that they are um, really great to have because I don't have to worry about them getting dirty, falling apart like today's raining. Um, Miss Ellie's going to the vet. It's her yearly checkup. She's going to get a rabies shot and a distemper. So I thought that I would, you know, make her a homemade doggy bow because it is raining and it's just a little trip to the vet. It's not a big deal. So she's going to keep me company. Um, but she is, however, a hot mess because if you can't tell, I didn't groom her yet this morning. So here we go. Pretty much all you need is just a few pieces of ribbon. And I've picked out um, a couple of colors that I thought would complement Miss Ellie's coat. You need a form. And I guess I have this, it's a, it's a bow easy. I bought it off of Amazon. Um, and what this pretty much does is it pretty much gives you a template to create your doggy bow. I found that I didn't need it. Um, I just made one out of cardboard. Okay, so I have my needle and thread already. Uh, you can use a standard sewing needle. I found that a standard sewing needle, even sometimes the smaller sizes, puts holes in, you know, like the, the satin in the ribbon. So what I'm using is an English beading needle, which I bought in the craft store. They're actually very fragile. Um, I don't snap them so much now, but in the beginning, I just kept snapping them in half but they're also going to work nice to navigate around small beads. So what I'm going to do is I have a backing. Um, I'm going to make the yellow the top and then I'm going to just line it with white and then I'm going to wrap it around my form. So in the back For, you know, it makes it easier to sew it together down the middle. I'll wrap across one side of the form and then wrap across the other. I mean, in this case, I can go and trim a little bit off. It's not a big deal. And then I have my flag backing which I'm going to attach on the back. And really all this little piece of cardboard does is it allows you to judge the width of your hair bow. So I've already measured it against Miss Ellie's head and this is the size that I like to make. Um, I couldn't tell you what it is in inches. I haven't measured it. But pretty much that's the idea. Like you could buy it the Bow Easy on Amazon or something similar. I just kind of use Miss Ellie's little noggin to judge the size. And that's all that this form really is going to do for me. So very carefully, I'm just going to remove it and make sure that my layers are tucked in. And I'm going to stick my needle straight through the middle of the whole thing, um, making sure that I've caught all the layers because if, if you don't catch all the layers of the ribbon, I mean, I've made them with like one piece of ribbon, totally up to you. But in my case, I have some layers and I wanna make sure that I've grabbed them all. Now I am not a seamstress or anything of that nature by any means, 
But when I was a little girl, my mother had a professional job um, as, you know, a seamstress. She worked for a company and then she worked for another company that made like pillows and comforters and stuff for like department stores. Um, and I kind of feel like sewing is just one of those like lost art forms these days. Uh, I learned from my mother and my aunt and my grandmother who all hand sewed everything. I know how to use a sewing machine. Um, I'll crochet, I'll cross stitch. I, I kind of feel like those are things that they don't necessarily teach anymore. Uh, when I was in middle school, I had a sewing class and I thought it was so much fun. But okay. So I know it's hard to see because, you know, strings white. But really what I'm doing is I'm just sewing straight up the mid middle to sew all the layers of my bow together. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty because we're going to put like beads on top. Okay, so once I'm fairly confident that I have it tacked together, I'm going to bring my needle all the way down to the bottom, uh, but right before, you know, right before the edge of the, right at the very bottom, at the edge of the fabric, and bring it around the back. Okay, and then I'm going to go from the back to the front, again at the very top. Uh, and I'm going to look for my beads. So you can really pick out any kind of bead that you want. They're really inexpensive. Um, when you, if you go to the craft store, they're very inexpensive. So today I just have a simple glass bead um, and two little silver beads that I'm going to tack on to the front of my hair bow. And I guess after I get them on, because they're so small, I'll show you what they look like. Oops, I missed one in this case. And especially with like these English beading needles, I really dread when I have to re-thread the needle uh, because the holes are really tiny. But in this case, because like I didn't get my bead on correct, I have to go back and re-thread this ridiculously tiny needle. Okay, so we're back. So this time I'm gonna make sure I got my little beads on straight. There we go. Miss Ellie, you're such a hot mess today. She's going to get a complete brush out and she's going to get a bath in a little while. Um, she's going for her rabies and her heartworm. Okay. Okay. So once I have my beads set on, um, I just tack them in place by... bringing my needle from the front to the back. 
And I guess that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm just tacking them on. Um, I found, you know, like, I found it's easier for me because then they don't keep falling off. So there you go. And I'm going to come around to the back and I'm going to grab my, I have two rubber bands. Now, if you don't want to buy, like, um, these are ortho orthodontic bands. That's what's going to hold the dog bow in place. So here's one that I've already finished. So you've tacked the beads on the front and I have the bands to hold the hold the bow in place. Um, you can go to like the dollar store and you could get like a thousand like little baby rubber bands for like babies. Um, I use them too on the dog. Um, they happen to be, most of the time they're latex bands, which I don't mind, but some people don't like latex. Okay, so anyway, now that I have my bands on the back, I'm going to once again, push it from the front to the back just to tack on my bows. Uh, I like to tack everything together because oop, I got to fly. I'm not that coordinated um, and it's just easier for me. So at this stage, what I want to do is run my string, you know, my thread straight through all three beads around the back and through my, through my bands. And I'm going to just repeat this process, you know, maybe like 10 times, just until everything is all sewed together. I go through the front, through the beads, and then around the back through the bands. And this is pretty much the method that I use to sew together my doggy bows. Uh, it's usually, it's pretty quick. Um, I get a kick out of doing it. Uh, I don't feel like, you know, I make the best dog bows, not like the professionals, and I really enjoy buying them because sometimes, like, you kind of, it, it's a trade-off for, you know, time, and I think it's kind of annoying unless you have a lot of patience, which I don't always. Uh, and the materials, depending on, like, I, in this case, I have, you know, some simple ribbon but it can get pretty expensive. I do really like to, like I've said before, that I'm not shy at all about my habit of buying dog bows. Okay, and I like to hold everything together between my fingers and just tighten to cinch the middle a little bit. Okay, so at this stage, you know, like right now I'm pretty confident that it's all going to stay together. It's not necessarily going to fall apart, but I have some like fuzz or something kind of stuck on here. I don't know what's going on with that. <clears throat> I'm just going to have fuzz on my doggy bone. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go around the back and bring my needle through my bands one more time. And I like to tack the bands in place from the back. Uh, I just go through the last like um, layer of the ribbon, not the whole thing, so you don't see it from the front. And I just tack my band in place. Uh, you don't have to, but I like to because sometimes when like you put the hair bow on the dog, it doesn't like stay straight because the bands move around. So I happen to like just like to tack um, those bands in place. So as you can see, it's not the nicest doggy bow. You could kind of see my fuzz 
that got stuck, but, but now I have a, the form of a dog bone. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off my ribbon. Oh, that's where fuzz is coming from my grooming mat. Right now, today, be pretty to you. You're such a hot mess. It's almost embarrassing that, like, she gets on camera like that. She's not even dressed. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut a little V. in my flag back. Uh, it looks like I don't have the right scissors because I'm making a mess. Hmm. Okay, well my scissors are cooperating, so I'm going to make a straight flag back. We're gonna improvise. Okay, so here we go. Now I have the, the doggy bone. Um, so at this stage, what I'm going to do now is, because it doesn't look very pretty, it's all flat, it looks nothing like the finished product, I want it to take this shape. And how I do that is I have just a simple, piece of aluminum foil and two knitting needles. These are US size 11 and I'm going to slide my dog bow onto my knitting needle. And actually I probably, these are an 11 probably could use a 13. So hold on, I'm gonna get a 13. Okay, renegade puppy. Okay, so I have a 13. And, you know, now I kind of have to push my layers back together. All right, so I'm going to slide it on. Okay, so if you can tell I got some ribbon. Um, I don't want to see that. So I'm going to just trim it. Because we tacked all of the layers together so it really doesn't hurt anything to trim it off. Um, Okay, so there you go. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I have glue. I have made some glue. And so you're pretty close here. There we go, we stay there. Good boy. Because I want to I want to make the dog bow like a little stiff. If I squeeze really hard it'll flatten. Um, but I want to retain the shape. And what's nice is um, about what I'm going to show you is that it's pretty much like water soluble. It's non-toxic. I went and I bought plain old white glue. You put it in the microwave for maybe like 10-15 seconds just so it's warm 
and I mix the white glue uh, with maybe, I do half and half, you could start there, and then if you don't like uh, how the bow hardens, you could always water it down, add more glue. I do about half, half. I do half white glue, half water. Um, it will not, just so you know, it will not like mix together well unless the glue is warm. So you want to heat the glue up. And this is what I'm going to use to stiffen as a fabric stiffener and stiffen my bow. Uh, oh, sorry guys, I gotta get up again because I forgot something. Apologize, totally was not prepared. Um, but what I have is I have this, it's like an oil based um, for paint. You know, it's just a, a paintbrush, and I like it because I it's long, I can stick it in the bottle of glue. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna do to stiffen my bow. It's a great little DIY project uh, if you're coordinated. I'm not really that coordinated. Um, and you don't really have to worry about putting glue. I mean, it's okay to put the glue on your beads because a little rubbing alcohol, uh, just a little secret, will take that right off. Now, I just wanna make sure that I have a nice, even coat all over my bow. Um, I do put the glue on the flag back, especially with some of the, like, you know, because I'm not really buying expensive fabrics, they fray, so it does control the fray. Okay, and there you have it. You have just made a dog bow, or in my case, I have made a dog bow. I have stiffened it with homemade fabric stiffener. Um, and pretty much, oops, here you go. See, it's not very pretty, but it will be when it's done. Um, so, you know, it'll be all ready to go. It takes a couple hours to dry. And when it dries, you want to, you can use pliers if it's stuck but you want to firmly grasp the hair bow and rotate your knitting needles to pop it off um, when the glue is dry. You want to be care you really want to have a firm grip because if you don't sew it together tightly, you'll pull the whole thing apart. And there you go.